Прежде всего, потому что он, это есть энергетический потенциал. First of all, because it is that energetic potential that our consciousness works with. And if our physical body possesses different characteristics, such as a longer lifespan, that of thousand years, for example, or if it had three legs and eight arms, then our consciousness would be slightly different as well. And our consciousness is very much dependent on the fact that our physical body is the way it is, and that its physiological processes are as they are and its lifespan is also genetically predetermined. This is why our consciousness, taking all of this into account, is the way it is. Think of how much different our life would be if we could, for example, live for 1,000 years. Then the consciousness would be very different as well. There would be no need to hurry. One could study for 300 years or so, meditate for a while. We could slowly and thoughtfully read a book court a girl for some 15 years and raise the children much more seriously and thoughtfully. I mean, look how much room for action do we suddenly get. But we don't have this. We don't have these thousand years. What is it really? 78 years of our human life. It is in fact so little. And within this time, there is so much that we must do. There is so much to learn, to understand, so much that we have to recall. How can we make it? For this reason, all processes in our consciousness and therefore in our body must happen quickly. This is why we have such a fast body, this is why we have such a fast metabolism, and so on. This is why we need a quick mind. And all of these processes are mirrored in the physical body as a combination of energy and information, of course. And we will assign this combination conditional numbers, numbers that we need only to highlight the proportion. And the proportion would be the following, 6 to 1, 6 units of energy and 1 unit of information. Thereby, this 1 unit of information is nothing but our genetic difference. 1 unit only, and look what great meaning this 1 unit has. We are all different, there are no repetitions. Even twins are different from one another. And this is the difference that this unit makes. The six units of energy stand for the energetical resource that our body possesses. Aside from the biological energy that our body produces, it also produces other kinds of energy. Thermal energy, electric energy, biochemical energy. We have a lot of things there. The combination of all of this tells us that the body possesses energy. Some people and I suppose soon it will be you as well, are able to see this energy with their eyes, calling it aura. It is a field that surrounds the human body. It has some colors, colors combinations, or just a certain color density that shows that a given object is alive, because the non-living have no aura. The next subtle body differentiates itself from the physical one only because it has a slightly different combination of energy and information. To be precise, five units of energy and two units of information. What kind of information is it? It is of more interest to us here. Firstly, it is the same one that is present on the first level. One unit is already there. And one additional unit that shows us how the sensation of a person changes every second. This means that the component of time starts to play a role here, on this level. And with every second of time, we feel somewhat differently. Although we don't notice this all the time. But why? Because we just cannot continuously pay attention to the beat of our heart, to its sequence and its tune, or to what has now moved in our intestines. Otherwise, we would not be able to take care of anything else. For this reason, the human psyche is structured in a way to not pay attention to the standard, regular functions of the body, to its own physiology only when something starts hurting. And we perfectly know that when something hurts, it is not a time for higher matters. All of our attention goes to where the ailment is, 
to where the unpleasant sensations lie. And this quality of consciousness will also greatly serve us in our exploration efforts of the latter, because it confirms the second and not least important law of our energo-informational world that states, where there is attention, there is energy. We have to memorize this because we will be constantly referring back to this law. The second subtle body, or the first after the coarse physical body, is called etheric body. Five to two. This is the etheric body. It is essentially the aura that people see. The energetic density around the physical body. As a rule, it never exceeds 10-15 centimeters if we will observe it with our eyes and feel it with our tactile sensations then in a normal state it does not exceed those dimensions. If a person has a lot of energy or is very excited, then it is possible that their etheric body will have slightly different outlines. We will talk about this later. 10-15 cm around the physical body. However, according to its characteristic, the etheric body has a very important function for our consciousness. It accumulates all of the energy produced by the body, transforming it in a specific way, as some layers of our consciousness cannot be directly charged by the energy that has been produced by the physical body. Take cars as an example. They don't run on petroleum. It must be first refined into fuel, gasoline, or whatever the petroleum is refined to meaning that a certain intermediary is needed that can combine all types of energies to transform them, mix them up, and then direct one current towards one area of the consciousness and another current towards another area, and so on. This takes place in the etheric body. But who gives out the orders, what type of energy and where to direct it? For that, there is a superior instance a higher body that is stronger due to the amount of energy and information it possesses with an additional information unit, four energy units, and three information units are found in the next layer. And this layer is called the astral body. The astral body is the body of human emotions and desires. It is them indeed that force the etheric body to direct a certain amount of energy to education, a certain amount of energy to physical health, another amount of energy to social life, another amount of energy to private life, namely to all the spheres of human existence. This is the function of the astral body. And as you could understand, subordination is strictly respected in this serious structure. And if one starts to experience an ailment of some kind on their physical body, this ailment doesn't come out of nowhere, meaning that the higher authority, the astral body, gave a directive to its subordinate, the factory supervisor, the etheric body, not to supply this organ, for example, with energy. So the organ starts to lose its energy, it starts to die off. So why can it allow itself to do such a thing? Why would it cause damage to its own physiological factory? Only because of structures, informational structures, which being familiar with computers we call viruses. In the astral body, these are fears, simply fears that are actually these so-called viruses. They cause a defect in the astral body, a distortion of the astral space, and therefore 
the astral space starts giving out wrong commands. Thus, only fears, human emotions that have not been worked out, are the cause for illness. And nowadays, almost all doctors say that most illnesses, their reasons, are of psychosomatic nature. And only very few ailments have other non-psychosomatic causes. The astral body, by the way, does not make such decisions autonomously. It is also subordinated. It too has a supervisor at a higher level. This level contains three energy units and four informational units, and is called the mental body. Here is where a magical transformation takes place. And if energy prevailed on the physical, etheric and astral levels, then starting from the mental body, it is the information that dominates. And this tells us that this body's characteristics are significantly different from the bodies that were below it. There is less energy. And this means that there will always be a deficit of energy. And what is scarce becomes more desirable. This is well known, wouldn't you agree? If we lack something, we want it more compared to something that we already have. Take ice cream, for example. What if your freezer is filled with it? When we had a great desire for it, we stocked up. But when we look at this ice cream, we realize that we would love to have some meat that is in there. That's the human psyche. And human subtle bodies are actually just the same. The mental body will want energy. And it can take energy only from one level below. As there is one more law we are familiar with, not only from an energo-informational point of view, but also from a point of view of our natural world, from history, from politics. The vassal of my vassal is not my vassal. Are you familiar with this rule? This way, one subtle body can only command the one right below it. It cannot command a body that is two steps down. Only its direct subordinate. Very strict vertical hierarchy rules here. This way, the mental body can direct energy towards its specific needs only by going through the astral body. And to do so, the mental body must learn to command the astral body. Namely, thoughts should command emotions. This is called teaching. This is called upbringing. The culture of behavior and education. And we have been learning this since early childhood. This is what we have been taught in our family, our culture, to develop our mental body and through this mental body learn to somehow control our emotions. And all of this is not bad. It is doubtlessly a great idea, only that the method which has been chosen by the mental body was not independent. It didn't help to reach such an effect because it too has a big boss. See how many bosses are there, just like in life. In this one, the distribution between energy and information moves closer towards information. Two units of energy and five units of information. This layer is called the causal body. This complicated name comes from the word cause. This way the causal body is the body of our experience, of the law of cause and effect. It is mainly informational. And if the mental body simply stores the information related to the world we live in, then here you will find one very important algorithm. Here all information is compressed. It doesn't spill or ooze. It doesn't take on the form of a thought. It is straightforward and clear, beginning, end, cause, effect, was, is, without any emotion. And it is this body that tells the mental body about this world and how it should be. It tells the mental body what sort of worldview the carrier of the entire system should have in order to survive in the given society what it is that this consciousness should rely on in order to be healthy, successful and to avoid illnesses and misfortunes. 
and it seems like a noble idea, but we know that our experience is incomplete. And we only get to experience that which is allowed. And the experience that is forbidden, we only get to have it by overcoming our fears of being punished by this society. And this is the kind of life experience that we allow ourselves to have. Am I explaining it all clearly? And the experience that we don't allow ourselves to have is regulated by an even higher structure. It is called the buddhic body. One energy unit, a great energy deficit. There is so very little of it. Only imagine what sort of fights take place at this level for every slightest gram of energy. And six informational units. Whereas information, on the other hand, there is tons of it. And since there is a deficit of energy, the buddhic body has one main objective, to direct the energy towards what it needs. And it only needs one thing, to maintain a stable consciousness system of the individual as for him not to wish anything else besides what has been initially prescribed within the buddhic body. Because the buddhic body is the system, the layer, that curates our consciousness by the means of values and beliefs. And this is quite a serious thing. It is in fact the big boss. Safeguarding the stability of the human consciousness. Am I speaking too fast? I will slow down. Therefore, the main principles of how a person should live are saved here. And what sort of principles can these be? Very simple. What should be important and what should not be important? What to live for? This is written within the buddhic body.